So what's up YouTube? My next project for the Miata is going to be a push to start. Now I'm kind of toying with the idea of using the cigarette lighter itself as the button because when you push the cigarette lighter in, it connects the circuit together. So I think I'm going to try and do that. But for this video, I'm going to just show you the basics of the way to do it on any 89 to 97 Miata. They're all going to be the same. If you want to get a push to start button, any push to start button on eBay will work. You can do the $40 S2000 button if you want, but it's totally unnecessary. This one I think was like seven bucks shipped and it just says engine start, not the engine start slash stop because this will not turn off the car. I don't care to figure out how to do that. What I'm going to do is two rocker toggle switches with the red covers. One is going to power all of the run cycle and one is going to power the accessory only. That way when I'm parked at say a car show or you know just sitting in the car and want to listen to the radio, one will turn on the radio by itself. The other will power up the actual run features and then when I want to shut the car off I can just close the rocker switches and it'll kill the power to the car. The start button is not going to do that. This will just be for start. So I'm going to kind of go over what you need to purchase, what needs to be done, and I also have a fancy little wire diagram I'm going to show you guys. So let's get into that first. Okay to begin with the Miata from 89 to 97 inside the ignition switch wiring harness you're going to have two white wires, a black wire with a white chaser, a black wire with a red chaser, a black wire with a blue chaser, and a solid blue wire. The black with the white powers the accessories such as the radio. The black with the red powers the windows, switches, the heater, the lights, everything non-essential to running the car. And then the black with the blue powers the starter and the solid blue powers the ignition itself, the coil pack, etc. The two white wires provide power to the key switch. So what you're going to do, obviously first disconnect the battery because not only are you working with constant 12 volt power but you're working on the main relay section and you don't want to pop your main relay because you're going to have to find a new one. So one white wire I'm going to use to power the actual switches and then the other white wire I'm going to use to power the relays. The switches are low current, the relays are high current so that way I can keep everything separated. What we're going to have is the start button is going to have constant white power going to it. The green is going to come out to a single pole double throw relay. You're going to have to search for it on eBay as SPDT. So it'll have five prongs with 87A being the center prong. My run switch is going to power a single pole single throw relay. So that'll only have four poles on the back of it, no middle 87A. And then my accessory switch is going to power another single pole single throw relay. So you're obviously going to need two. I would buy four just in case one of them blows and you can't start your car, but you're going to want two of these and one single pole double throw relay, which I don't have yet because it's in the mail. Another thing I would recommend is to purchase these guys with the five wires. They're cheap on eBay and it'll make your life a lot easier wiring these up and connecting them as well because you don't have to use crimp connectors. So let's move all this out of the way. So what we're going to have is white power going to the two switches here. The accessory switch is going to power up the switch side of the relay while the white power coming into terminal 30 is then going to go out on the other side to the black slash white wire. That circuit right there will power your radio and your cigar lighter charger, which we're not going to be using. I'm replacing the cigar lighter chargers port with the start button itself. You could use the cigarette lighter as the start button, which I think would be kind of cool because you can also then pull the cigarette lighter out and put it in your armrest or glove box and no one would know how to start the car because they would never think that it would be the cigarette lighter, much less to try it after turning on these switches. Hide these switches somewhere under the dash, obviously, so that it's harder for people to start your car. I would hide them out of the way somewhere, or at least under the dash panel real low. Or if you have other switches already in your car, just kind of mix them in with those. The start button, the way I'm going to set it up is the powered white wire is going to come into one side. The green is going to go out to the single pole double throw relay. The black, I'm going to wire to the 
e-brake so that the start light, because this is a lighted button, this button is only going to light up if the e-brake is up. So again, if somebody hops in the car and they start flicking switches, unless they have the e-brake up, this isn't gonna light up and it could be even more confusing for them. I could also run it where this switch and its single pole, single throw relay ground only is activated, say for example, the power is activated by the switch, but the ground isn't activated unless the e-brake is up. That could also be a theft deterrent to prevent people from just hopping in your car and flicking the switch on and starting your car. So I'm probably gonna wire it up that way. I'm not real sure yet. Some people would say, well, you're not gonna be able to start the car without the e-brake up. Say for example, if you're going down the highway and the car goes dead for whatever reason, you're not gonna be able to try and restart it with the start button without the e-brake up because the start button's disabled without the e-brake activated. But in a stick shift, you can just put it back into fifth gear and let out on the clutch and it'll pop start the car. So you don't actually need the start button if you're rolling. So there's options there. The run switch is gonna power this relay that's gonna get its power from white line number one. That line is then going to power up the blue wire so that your ignition coil pack gets power constantly. And it's going to power up the single pole double throw relay that is now activating the black and red. So all of your systems come online, your check engine light, everything on the dash, your windows, the heater, lights, everything will work while this switch is on and while the start button is not being depressed. The point of the single pole double throw relay is that the second I hit this start button, it turns off 87A momentarily and turns on 87, which is the black and blue wire, the start wire. And then as soon as you let off of the start button, it turns off the start wire and turns back on the black and red. So as you can see, that's how you're going to get the operation you need to where both of these switches on, powers up the accessories and the blue wire and the black and red wire. When you hit the start button, it turns off the black and red wire momentarily while it uses the black and blue for the starter. When you let go, it turns off black and blue and turns black and red back on. I know this is all kind of wizardry to some people. Wiring isn't their forte. You just gotta think of it like a flow of water. The water's coming in from one side. It's gotta go somewhere to ground or to the starter, which has a ground or to the accessories, which has a ground. Either way, everything's gonna flow through. The main thing is that you don't want to just have all the black and red operational while you're trying to start because then you have less energy for the actual starting system. So you want the single pole double throw relay to switch off all the accessory power except for the blue wire while you're trying to start the vehicle otherwise your ignition coil will be off that's why the blue wire is still going to be on even when you're starting i know it doesn't make a lot of sense on paper it does to me because i've done this plenty of times but part two will be more in depth i'll show more of how this is wired up how everything fits together i can also show how to wire this switch if you purchase the same switch on ebay if you have any questions post them in the comments below if you like the video click the like button if you want to see more videos like this and be notified instantly hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell next to the subscribe button so you'll be notified as soon as i post a new video and as always guys keep modding